sustainable preparedness. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. We talk about food storage, water storage, getting all the things, but true sustainability. How do you sustain that if we enter into some kind of long-term event? Or it just becomes harder to find food or to get food if food shortages continue to worsen, if the effects of China and all these other countries stockpiling food really starts hitting us even harder. It's gonna be harder to get stuff out there, right? So our food storage will only last so long. So I, I can't say it enough, encouraging you guys to do things like this. Gardening, raising your own animals, this is going to be the key to long-term survival. So stand by. I'm going to show you some of the things I'm doing lately. Some updates, some hints, some tips, stuff like that. First update is our newest raised bed. Our tallest raised bed. Made out of the table split in half. And somebody asked me, one thing is, um, how do you deal with the varnish and soaking into the um, ground, the dirt and stuff. Well, I put the varnish side out and the other side in. It still has a little tiny bit of finish on it, but it's not like the thick varnish on the outside. And because it's not really that pretty, I thought about hitting it with a sander, sanding it up so it makes so it just looks like raw wood. Because uh, it looks to me like this bed, like this wood, is redwood. I think it's redwood, so that would look really nice. But as you can see, that's just that's here nor there. As you can see, we've been adding more material to the bed. Lots of compostable material. And today we decided to clean up the yard some more. So we went around, we got a bunch of uh, twigs, branches, and stuff like that that were all over the yard. And then you see these um, hollow things right there that look like um, bamboo. Well, it's not bamboo, I believe. And once they start turning green, I will be able to better identify them. But I believe it is elderberry. I believe I have an elderberry bush. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, I didn't even think about it. My son used to go in there just because they're easy to break, he'd hack them all up. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I think those are elderberries after seeing somebody else's elderberries. Um, so I'm like, stop, stop, stop. We're going to take good care of them now. I'm going to clean them up really well. I'll sh like I said, I'll show you that. But anyway, these were some dead ones as we're cleaning it up. Some, you know, fur needles, stuff like that. And you can see some, uh, you know, the compostable stuff I had put down in there also. But yeah, that's, we're continuing to fill that up. We've also been getting some dirt from the woods and um, putting it in there also to help top that off. So that's the update on our newest raised bed. Updating an older raised bed is this bed. We added a, another log to the height, so now it is three logs tall, kind of like this one, which was our, this was our first bed of 2022. So there's that one. That one's pretty much topped off, but right now we're talking about this one. So this one, I added a log to the height, showed you guys that. It is a pretty big raised bed. Uh, I didn't even measure it. It's however long the logs are. <laughs> and then however wide they are. It looks like it's about four and a half, five feet wide by probably, what, 10, 11 feet long. But we're starting, because we added another, added more height and we're gonna be adding some more dirt, I've just been throwing in some um, compostable, compostable material to it also because, you know, why not? It's really good. It helps the soil grow. It helps the, all the nutrients adding to the soil, so it's just really good. We will be adding the, in this raised bed, I'm hoping to add the garden mix of 50-50 50, 50, 50 topsoil and fish compost mix. So we'll see how that works. Update on the first raised bed of 2022. This is pretty much done. I'm done adding stuff to it until we get the topsoil, you know, the garden mix. You can see a bunch of leaves in there from the forest. We got ashes from our campfire pit. We have 
old frozen fruit that, you know, we got freezer burnt and we just threw it in there and some frozen veggies, just threw it all in there. So this is in a bunch of, you can see some dirt we also got from around the property. Um, this raised bed is ready to go as far as, the only thing to add now is the, uh, the garden mix, sorry, the soil. So there's that bed. First time ever on video. This is what I believe is um, elderberry. This elder, all these, these stalks going up here. Because as you can see, there you go. Let me see if I can do a close up of some of the branches. You can see some of those, the branches. I believe that is elderberry. So like I said, when it turns green, we will be able to better identify the fact of if that is elderberry or not. But there's quite a few plants in there. There's some knocked down we still need to pull out. But um, yeah, I'm hoping that is elderberry because that'll be a really sweet addition. Huh, <laughs> no pun intended. I hope you guys aren't getting bored by the whole gardening thing. We do a mix here on the channel, as you see. We do tactical stuff. We do, you know, stuff that may be a little more exciting. But to me, this is exciting because this gives me the ability to long-term provide for my family. And yes, this is just the gardening portion. We're working on chickens. We're working on getting the meat production down. But growing your own food is vital. We are really trying to up our game. Every year we try to really up our game. I would like to double the size of my garden. Um, we may be adding in a cornfield this year. Um, not really sure about that. What I'll probably do if I do that is um, we have a bunch of field corn that we you know throw out for the squirrels and stuff. Hey, it's food. It may not be sweet corn, but field corn, throw it in the ground. If it grows, it grows. If it produces, great. If not, it cost me some labor and some squirrel feed, you know, basically that spilled out onto the deck anyway when I accidentally tipped the bag over. So what? It's worth a try, I think. Um, maybe a bunch of work, but hey, we're gonna try that out. I just, I can't stress enough how much I hope you guys are heading in the direction of self-reliance, self-sustainability, being, mm, excuse me, being able to produce your own food. Because I have a feeling, and you probably know too, you might have the feeling also, that food will be getting more and more difficult to get. And if not more difficult, much more expensive. And all that aside, the fresh fruits and vegetables that you grow yourself, oh my, they taste so much better. So much, the nutrient value is exponentially higher, I'm sure. I'm sure of it than mass produced, um, you know, stuff on farms with all the chemicals and all the crap they throw in it. And you know, their soil is probably not that great. Um, my soil is awesome. Uh, yeah, definitely. I use really good soil. I do lots, as you can see, lots of the organic materials in there to break down over time. Yeah. So I'm going to show you a couple other things. This is one area, I forget if I've ever shown it on film before, but I really hope they grow because as you see here, turnips, why these are, these are volunteer turnips. Well, I get volunteer turnips everywhere and they don't really grow in the ground. The turnips I grow in the raised beds are awesome, but the ones in the ground just don't really ever do anything. They just go, they bolt and they go to seed, which I collect the seeds, but that's about it. But actually under that, I need to pull those out. Under there in that area is um, planted, what, eight or 10, maybe even 12 um, avocados. So I'm hoping that they grow. I get it, they're, they're, not, they're spaced a little close, but I'm hoping that I can get the whole magic male-female combo so that maybe I'll be able to grow some avocados. I don't know. I'm gonna try that and see how well it works. I'm hopeful. Here is something I haven't shown in a while. My homemade compost bin. My dual bin compost bin with a bunch of cardboard here that's, uh, that's gonna be compostable material, except for the stuff that has uh, you know the writing on it. That just needs to go to the dump. But anyway, this is the compost pile. Got dirt in it, I just turned it up recently. Um, this is the one that we're just, this is the oldest bin. This is the one that we'll be using the first. I took a bunch of this stuff out of here and put it in some of our newer raised beds. 
and it's not fully composted, no, but it will, and it'll finish its composting cycle in the raised bed. And then over here, we got all these. Obviously, I had put soil down and stuff like that, but then I dumped a bunch of these potatoes, and they're um, really soft and stuff like that. They weren't really good. They, were, they wouldn't last for seed potatoes. Uh, so I didn't want to put them in the ground because they'd already softened. I know I could get some of those little eyes, cut them off, and they might grow, but I have plenty of potatoes to use as seed potatoes. So this is our working side, and that's our older side. So recommend you guys compost. Compost everything you possibly can. It's just, I mean, making your own amazing soil is great. And it's just, it's really good for mending your soil and keeping your fruits and vegetables growing optimally for years and years. I've added three new raised beds this year and height to another one. We got a lot more to do. This is a journey of becoming more and more prepared, more and more capable, capable of feeding my family, my tribe, my neighbors, if I need to. I hope you guys are too. This is very, very important. 17 raised beds. Let me see, one, two, three. Three of them are smaller. So 14 pretty much full-size raised beds. Looking to add that, make that number 20 at least full-size raised beds. Maybe that field of corn, the different areas I showed you, you know, the elderberry over here, the avocados over there, I get it, they're not gonna produce avocados. Also, I haven't shown you yet this year, but you think you can see it on camera, that you might be able to see the branches right here. I think it is, is our plum tree. We have a plum tree there, another plum tree over here um, next to our house. So those, we, I think we'll get plums this year from them. And then another thing I saw I wanna add is somewhere probably in my lower field, I'm gonna do that area as my chicken area and cornfield and like an orchard area. Um, I saw Costco the other day, um, fruit trees. There's one tree they had grafted on, like I think they grew like five different kinds of apples. It was 19 something, it was 20 bucks. I thought, man, that's pretty cool. I was in the car though, not the truck, so I didn't get any. And they had a cherry tree that grew through three different kinds of cherries. So I'm looking at getting, uh, you know, get a couple of them. I'll probably get, you know, maybe two of the apple trees, two of the cherry trees, and just try it out. See how well they work. They're 20 bucks, you know, I think that's a good deal. And they're decent sized, and they already had buds on them and everything. So yeah, I think I'm gonna try that. I encourage you guys to try everything you possibly can. Grow the foods you love, and grow lots of them, so you can have lots of calories. Can, freeze dry, dehydrate, whatever, the excess, so that you can be adding to your food storage and producing the awesome abundance that God has given us and has given us this ability to grow on this earth and to make or to grow awesome fruits and vegetables that our family loves. My kids love it. We, we just chow the whole gardening season when we're out here in the garden. It's amazing. All this yummy food is so good for you. It's so healthy for you. Uh, and I encourage you guys to, you know, garden as close to organically as possible. You don't want all that chemicals and nasty crap in your food. But anyway, I hope this encourages you guys. I hope you guys are really getting the vibe. I hope maybe, you know, some of you guys may still be frozen tundra, snow and all stuff like that. Um, so maybe you aren't able to do this stuff as much as possible or right now. But I hope it's really lighting a fire under your butts, under your rear ends to get out there and to get this whole gardening thing going as soon as we possibly can. I'm excited, I'm excited for this year. I wanna be able to continue producing food for my family, whether it's available in the markets or not. This is food security. Prep out of peace of mind, not out of fear, remember that. This is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness and I love you very much. Have a wonderful day, blessings to you and yours.